Hello, thank you for checking out another one of my videos. I'm Isaac Ostrom and today I'm going to give a demonstration on soldering copper pipe for water supplies or doing uh, hot water heaters, uh, shower mixer valve, bathroom, or any other copper connections. You can uh, irrigation piping. Most of the stuff we use in the homes is three quarter inch and half inch. By the time it gets to the bathrooms it's usually half inch. Out by the hot water heater it's usually three quarter. So today I'm going to be demonstrating uh, doing three quarter inch pipe and if you can do three quarter you can do half inch because half inch is much as e easier to do than three quarters because it heats up half inch heats up faster than the three quarters so uh, the tools needed so uh, first thing we're going to use is our actual pipe cutter so this little tubing cutter clamps onto the pipe and will cut the pipe off real nice uh, th this type because they'll fit in real tight areas in a wall if needed Second thing we're going to need is emery cloth. Um, this is going to, it's like basically sandpaper that can get wet. So we use this to, to um, rough up and clean the edges of the old copper before we put the flux on. We're also going to need flux. Uh, this is a water base uh, flux that I like to use. Uh, the, the solder, completely lead free, I think this is 95% lead free and uh, this one works well for me. Uh, we're gonna need map gas. Uh, this is our map gas. Comes in a yellow bottle. Uh, you'll also see propane, uh, but propane, uh, but propane uh, burns at a much lower temperature, so the map gas is good. You're gonna be able to solder your joints a lot faster when you use the map gas. Um, and then the torch head, of course. This is the torch head that I use. So those are the tools needed, so we're going to go over this real quick and uh, hope you guys get something out of it. So after all the ends of our pipe are cleaned up with the emery cloth, we'll do this, this pipe too. So yeah, you can see what, what ends up happening here after you do the emery cloth. You got the area that's oxidized here, and then when you do the emery cloth, gets it nice and shiny. So now that's ready for flux. So the second thing we do is we get our flux and our little brush right here. You can use uh, something else to get the flux on but they sell these little brushes and you just go on with the flux. You don't have to put a whole lot of flux on there but you do need to make sure that it gets on there good. You can see I'm taking the brush and just getting getting all the flux everywhere where there's going to be solder. So basically the flux is like a primer for our fittings. So got the fitting on there. So it's important to do the flux on both the pipe and the fitting. We need flux on both sides to prime the surface. Okay, so now we're ready to solder. But it, it's one thing that's important to know about soldering is if there's any water in these pipes whatsoever, any water at all, I mean just a, a drip coming down, this solder will never, never flow properly. The pipe won't get hot enough. I mean you can, you can leave the flame on there for half hour and it's still not going to get hot enough. So if you have any drip going, uh, you need to find a way to stop that drip. So sometimes if you have a leaky gate valve or something out, outside and the water shut off, uh, try shutting off uh, the gate valve at the hot water heater. Some people use bread to stick up into the pipe to keep the water from coming down. But whatever you do, you need to find a way to get that drip from, from coming down. Because if there's a drip in the pipe, you'll never get a good solder. And that's the biggest mistake people who haven't done it before. They're soldering and soldering and they're gooping it on and gooping it on and what will happen is the solder will just keep falling off. It won't ever suck up. So when I show you when, when the solder actually takes, it's very, you know for sure that that solder is going in because it just melts like a candle and it almost sucks into the fitting. So uh, the other thing um, that I like to do in my technique with soldering is, I'm going to get out of the way so you can see the fitting. I apply the heat on one side of the fitting and then I'll apply my solder on the other, opposite sides. What that does is that makes sure that this whole fitting and this whole pipe is hot enough 
that if I apply it on the opposite end, it for sure is hot enough where I'm putting the flame on it. So that's just another technique I use to make sure that it's hot enough that that is going to get the solder to go all the way around because that's what we're after. We just got to get the pipe hot enough to take the solder. Um, the other technique I do too is I aim the flame towards the fitting. So the flame is going to be pointed towards the fitting, whether it's there or if it's here, I'm going to point the flame down towards the fitting. What that does is it's directing more of the heat into the fitting, which is the thicker part of the copper, which is going to take longer to heat, and it's going to actually draw the solder down into the fitting better. Okay, and also before I begin, I always have a, a damp cloth ready to go, and of course, <laughs> we're using fire here, so you got to be really careful of adjacent materials. If you got wood next to you, or if you have uh, insulation, be really careful where you're pointing this flame, and don't burn yourself. Uh, so I keep I keep a wet rag just in case something flares up on a two by four or something. You can tamp it out, and then also you can cool your pipe with it once you're done. So you're going to see I'm going to apply the uh, heat on this side, and I'm going to apply the solder on this side. So get yourself a nice a nice uh, long piece of solder and I usually bend it so it's in a nice little 90 degree here easy to apply so here we go you'll also start to see the color of the pipe change you can test it out still not hot enough there it goes see it just melting in there there's a good joint, so I'm going to do the top joint, same technique, I'm going to be pointing the flame down, and, and I'll put the flame on this side, and the solder on this side, and maybe this is a little bit better view that you can see, but since the pipe and the fitting are already hot, this one's going to go a lot faster. There it goes, it's already hot enough, you see it just soaking right in there, boom. There's two really good solder connections right there. So, in the house if you don't have anybody else helping you. And if you do have a leak, you're going to hear air before you hear water. So if you hear a hiss of air, um, you, know you, got, you know you got a hole in your solder. And go shut that water off and figure out where that leak is. Um, but I've been doing it long enough. When I see that solder wrap around like that, when it melts that easy, I know it's a good joint. And so I'm really confident that this was done right. So. Again, I hope, hope this helped you guys out. This is a really common thing that we need to do in houses when we're doing uh, simple plumbing work. And I've showed you the video on PEX, so check that one out. Uh, but we still do a lot of copper work. All the houses around here built before like 2000 were, were all done with copper piping. And no matter which, even if we're using PEX, there's some places where we still have to solder the copper. So again, thanks for checking out my videos. I really appreciate it. I hope you guys get something out of it and uh, start making a lot of money and doing what you love to do. All right, guys, I'll talk to you later.